Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Devin's Garage. Behind me is a 2022 GMC Sierra 2500 AT4 HD. We are going to put some bushwhacker flares on it, but I'm gonna show you a little trick that I think is gonna help out in the future. After a while, they carved into the paint right here. They rub in there when they vibrate. And even in the instructions for these bushwhackers I have in the trunk, because they just got color matched, they also say on there that they're not responsible for any paint wear and that they can wear your paint with vibration. Stay tuned for that and let's dive right on in on this. The first thing that we have to do is put our edge guard around this outer top edge. And these are the fronts which I also had to modify for it to clear those wheels which are a negative 44 offset. I just used some window interior cleaner, just something that's non-oily to just clean off this inner edge. The tape was on this inner edge. Okay, so it's it kind of goes like this. So this is what it looks like. Right? And this tape sits on the, the back inside. And that channel sits right on top. So it goes just like this. So now that's done there. Take the one off of there. That, that's when things change from the regular bushwhacker instructions. What we're gonna do here is take off these screws. There's two here, one about here, one about here up on the edge, and then there is one there. There normally is some down there and a little cap, but my truck is modified and does not have that on there to fit these massive wheels that are throwing rocks and whatnot up at the truck, which is why we are doing this whole thing anyway. The light. There's a plug under the back, we're gonna take the plug off. And there, there's two Torx bit screws behind there as well we have to take off. This thing is held on by a million clips. Literally, you're gonna need an, a, a tool for that because without it, dude, you are not gonna be able to make this thing work. I've already taken these off when I fit, made sure this fender fit. So you're gonna need something like this. Um, it's metal, uh, that way you can reach in behind here and pop those things because you will bend the heck out of this fender trying to get those clips out. Definitely need this. There's literally probably about 15 clips. There's like, they're in doubles, like top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. I'll show you the back of this when I get it off. The torque bit size you're using, or at least I'm using here, is a T15. We're gonna get our other fender, we're gonna put it on and I'm gonna show you how things change from that process there because normally you'd be done but in this case we're going to do something to protect my fender in case i ever want to not run flares when you try to take this clip off there's this red little little clip you have to pull that up first okay there you go like that and then you can push in the black and pop it off like that you can see they are everywhere i think i even broke more of them taking them off now you just would have to replace all these luckily it doesn't break this part it just breaks them off of here. Let me find one that we broke. Uh, here we go, like this. It breaks the, it breaks the other side of them. So you just gotta pop them out like that. If you ever want to take these off and replace them, you want to put new lights in, etc. There's just a lot of clips. These come off easier. They're a different style clip because they're in plastic. This here's plastic. And then it goes to metal. But yeah, as you can see, or maybe you can't, you kind of bend some of this up. Luckily, it doesn't bend anything up here, but. Without using this, you gotta be very careful of your paint. But yeah, go up here and knock all these things out. You can usually move that plastic, that fender liner out of the way to get up in there. It's kind of the best way to do it. To place our light in, we're literally gonna take our light, we're gonna drop it in the hole there, and we're gonna tighten them from the back. This is an important step into what I'm doing, because I need this fitment. It's also gonna be the first time I get to see how this thing looks after being painted. Nice. All right, now as you can see, we are sitting nice and flush. The main thing I want right now is I want to be able to mark this. We're gonna be putting a piece of gloss black vinyl that goes just above this marking here. You can pick what color vinyl matches your vehicle. But I got a whole roll, 15 foot by four inch or five, five foot or four foot of uh, vivid 
gloss black, ultra gloss black, that actually matches the paint really well. So what I'm gonna do is knifeless tape right above this whole thing, and then take this off, lay the vinyl, cut it, and then put this back on so that this edge <laughs> is sitting on vinyl and not the paint, but it'll be barely visible enough to where you can barely see it. That way we're not rubbing it straight into the paint. And if we ever want to take this off, we peel this, we take this off, peel off the vinyl, and voila, we have a perfectly good fender still. Get some knifeless tape, which just so happens to be right over here. And we're going to wrap it right around this edge, pretty close to the rubber. We don't want too much vinyl sticking out. And then we'll leave a tail here, leave a tail at the bottom, and then we'll lay our, take it off, lay our vinyl. So you can see here, put our knifeless tape right around the edge. Left us a tail right here. So that way where that silver line is in that thing is gonna be where we're gonna be cutting our vinyl. Drops it. Championship belt, pull 360. And your cup, your, your sweatband. Oh yeah, that's true. It's, it's not, it doesn't repel sweat, it makes you sweat. It really does, it's kind of stressful. <laughs> We're not really going for looks here. We're just going for protection. All right, guys, now we're gonna work this up. Take your leftover green, take him out of there. On this edge. Had to trim the, between the uh, little plastic there. Now let me get the heat gun, go around this real fast, and then where you are protected. Okay, now you can use like an Expel or you know a clear PPF if you didn't want to go or you didn't have the color that could match your vehicle. Uh, just it will cost more money to do that. Uh, but this is how I have it set up right now. Like if you looked and you looked for an edge, yes, you'd find an edge. Uh, if you look for little dust particles, you'd find some dust particles because well, I live in the dirt and <laughs> it's a little windy out here, but that's not what we're going for. We're literally just going for some protection. You're only gonna see about a hair coming across from the bumper, so we're uh, from the fender. So we're gonna get our fender. We're gonna plug the light in, and I'll show you what our edge looks all the way around. We also tucked in right here, and I just kind of folded it in on the upper edge there. So from far away, I mean, you can't even tell that there's even anything on there. It actually matched the GM black surprisingly very well. Fender time. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there you go. There's just a little tiny line of wrap popping out of there so that the rubber is going to sit on the wrap and not on the paint. So when this vibrates and rubs away, it's going to rub at that wrap. So if I ever want to take these off for any reason, or they get damaged, or they fall off, or whatever, my fender will not have to be completely repainted. You could probably just, because of course this is going to get more wear and tear, more sunlight, you can just uh, do a compound polish, etc. It's not going to damage all the way down to the metal and beyond. So that, guys, is why I want to make this video of installing these things. Um, that also because the these are a little bit different where you have to um, use these brackets up here. I thought these things wouldn't fit when I first read the instructions on the website because this was supposed to go like this way. But yeah, these little brackets pop in here. Looks freaking amazing. Definitely adds some tire protection. As you can see, I now have a lot more protection than running like this. Now we're going to duplicate that whole process I just walked you through, that whole thing, on all the other corners in a couple years. Yeah, 2024! <laughs> Woo! It's installed. We got her on. It honestly looks freaking cool. It really gives the truck a whole new profile. Beef, beastly beefy. Yeah, they should have came like this. I see a lot of the GMCs usually with these style flares, except they'll usually put all the little, um, they have the ones with all the bolts. I went with just the add a fender, extend the fender option. So they're more clean and look factory. It's like a, it's like a TRX now, but for GMC, they don't have a, I guess they have what, those ZR2s? Well, no, not even the GMC, that's a Chevy. It looks better than this. It's gonna add protection better than that. And we don't have any more matte black plastic like that other than just the mirrors and those side steps. We got done about 8.30 p.m. last night and it got dark but I wanted to show you guys at least what it looked like in the daylight. It looks freaking killer all around. Same with that side there. A little dirty right now, but it's a black truck. It's always dirty, even right after you wash it. Funny how that is. And then this is how it looks from the front. Definitely adds a lot of beef. Really looks freaking killer. So now we can keep up and see how well they last. I know I'm gonna probably get a lot of rock chips right up on there for when this tire shoots it back. But hey, at least it's not the body, right? That was installing these bushwhacker flares on this truck. The better way where the wrap is behind it and it's not going to gouge into my paint. You can barely see the wrap on there. Actually, I can show you guys in the daytime too. It's just along that edge. Be in that case, I probably will have to switch that out in two, three years because you know it'll eventually want to wear through the wrap. But at least it's not wearing through my fender or the rear bed. So that's all we really cared about. Can't wait to see you in more projects like this or on the M4 or any other cars we start to work on because we're always working on something. Can't wait to see you guys in our next video. Thanks. Pretty cool little episode we're gonna have going on. That's all lame, I gotta redo all of that. This 22 GMC AT4, Sierra AT4 2500, I matched that all up. So yeah, we gotta redo this again.